Hello everyone, my name is Dmitry Vinik and I'm a developer advocate on the Facebook open source team. In this video, our open source developer advocates will answer some questions from the major league hacking fellows about open source, Facebook and more. So let's get started. My name is Pavan, I'm from India. The open source project I'm currently working on is AWS Amplify. My question is, how has open source made an impact within Facebook and helped them move towards their goals? Thanks for your question, Pavan. It's a good one. So how has open source made an impact at Facebook? Well, first of all, Facebook was built on open source technology, Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Without open source, it would have taken much longer to get facebook.com up and running. And ever since then, open source has been actually core to our engineering philosophy. We've not only continued to use open source technologies, but we've contributed back to them. We've also shared our own projects with the community. So sharing projects like React and PyTorch gives others a window into how we build. They can see how we solve challenges around speed, complexity, and scale. And those who are interested can then contribute back to these projects and bring their own unique ideas into solving these challenges some that we have never seen before or sometimes even thought of. And this allows us to collectively move technology forward much faster than if we were doing it all by ourselves. Open source also encourages engineers to come work for us and their onboarding process is much faster if they have experience using those open source projects before they join. In summary, the impact of open source at Facebook is huge. It's in our DNA. It helps us write better code, share our challenges with the world, and it aligns well with our overall company mission of building community and bringing the world closer together. My name is Jaida and I'm an MLH fellow based in Ghana. The open source project I'm working on is Repo Reports. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I'd like to inquire how your developer journey experience has been like, and also if you could share some unique experiences that has made it possible for you to be where you are today. Thank you. Hi Jaida, thanks for your question. So my name is Jessica Lin, and I'm a developer advocate here uh, based out of California, and I work in our AI and ML pillar of open source products. So to answer your question about my developer journey, well, throughout my experience, open source has played a really important part. So you see, my background was in biomedical engineering, and I later transitioned into educational technology, where I got to teach people from around the world how to develop an open source mobile and blockchain based protocols and later enable them to transition into new careers in technology. So the reason that I switched from medical tech to ed tech was because I stumbled across a free online course in computer animation. And it made me realize just how powerful it was to be able to open up a new technology and enable others to use it and then build upon it. And now here at Facebook, I get to create content that helps users learn how to use our open sourced machine learning frameworks such as PyTorch and Captum. And it's amazing to think that tools so powerful as these are really just free and open. And what's even more exciting, I think, is seeing how folks such as yourself learn this content and apply these frameworks into your own projects, your own situations, and then contribute that back and really shape the way that this technology develops. So thanks again, Jida, for your question and allow me to share about my journey. I really look forward to seeing how your contributions as a fellow, as well as how your work in open source will really shape your developer experience. Cheers. Hi, my name is Alex. I'm from the UK and I'm currently a fellow on the MLH Explorer program. My question is this, what's the next big thing that will impact day-to-day -day engineering? In other words, what's the, the next tech change coming along that will impact developers and how we work in your companies. Thank you. Hey Alex, my name is Kimmy Williams and I'm a developer advocate on the open source team focused on AR VR. Thank you so much for your question. I think the answer I'm about to give you is probably not exactly what you were looking for, but bear with me, hold on. Um, so I think one of the major influences that is hitting the tech industry right now is obviously working from home. As of now, we've been working from home for a little bit over a year, and I know that our productivity and day-to-day -day work, at least for myself, looks substantially different than it did a year ago. 
I know for me, I've been fortunate enough to be able to emphasize the work that I do outside of work, which means focusing on my side projects and contributions to the open source community. I definitely foresee this continuing outside the working from home status because this is our norm and people like it. To me, what that means are continued innovations and different perspectives in open source from people of diverse backgrounds. And for me, being the VRDA, I have to plug some virtual reality. We've published several blogs from the Oculus for Business team stating that VR can help us work better. It frees us from the limitations of a physical space, making remote work feel a little bit less remote. So I wanted to say thank you so much for your question, and I'm looking forward to see what you build in your fellowship. Hi, my name is Ali. I'm from Tunisia and I'm currently a fellow in the MLH Explorer program. Uh, so I'm a sophomore right now and um, I'm starting to understand which fields uh, I'm really passionate about in IT and uh, which fields are best suited for me. Um, therefore, my question is, should I only choose one or two subfields and really try to specialize myself into them and to dive deep into them? Or is it better to have a more general approach and to spend uh, time learning different technologies from completely different domains in IT? Thank you. Hi, Ali. Thanks a lot for your question. I'm Navrata and I'm a developer advocate for open source programs here at Facebook. It's great to have you participate in our MLH program here. Now to answer your question, I think you're already on the right track. While you're a sophomore, I think it's the best time for you to actually explore all the opportunities out there and figure out what it is that you're most passionate about. From an open source perspective, there are a ton of open source projects out there and they might all sound really exciting to you. However, I suggest that you evaluate them and you gauge them to try to figure out what it is that resonates with you the most. Is there a language that you're really excited about? Or is there a tool that you've been using and you would like to contribute? Or is there an ID that you really like using? Whatever it is, ask these questions to yourself and it's gonna give you a direction and it's gonna give you the satisfaction that you are working on something that you deeply believe in. While it's great to actually work on all these amazing technologies and also get to know all the emerging technologies out there, I think it's best to excel in a few that you're really excited about. And that's exactly what builds your expertise. So go ahead, try out all these opportunities, try out these projects and see what it is that you are passionate about. I hope I answered your question and all the best for your fellowship and I look forward to all your contributions. Hi, I'm Ravisha Sharma. I'm from Patna and I'm currently a fellow in the MLH Explorer program. Quite often we get to know that a few tech opportunities are limited to a certain range of colleges. It's fine when it is about campus placements, but when it is an open opportunity and still the preference is given to a limited range of colleges, I feel a little intimidated. Although this isn't unfair, but uh, it makes me feel that the skills I'm acquiring right now are not being given enough value. So here's my question. Shouldn't there be a focus uh, on the pre person's present technical skills and good communication skills instead of just judging on the basis of the tire of the college uh, or something that we did in our 12th grade? How should companies like Facebook make sure that they don't miss out on talented people uh, under the practice of reaching out to a limited range of colleges? Also, how do they make sure that uh, they are hiring on the basis of the varied day-to-day -day life skills and practical skills and not just tech? Hey Ravisha, I'm Jesslyn and I'm a developer advocate at Facebook. Your question really spoke to me. When I was an undergrad, I had applied and gotten rejected multiple times from Facebook and I remember being very frustrated at the time trying to figure out what I should have done differently. So here are three things that I wish I knew when I was applying as a student. First of all, there's a common myth that Facebook only recruits from the most elite schools, and that intimidated me so much. And you're absolutely right that Facebook does not send a recruiter to every single school in the world, but no company does. Um, but what Facebook does have is the whole world covered on the recruiting front, because we have offices all over the world, and there are awesome people all over the world. Some regions might share a recruiter, but no matter where you are in the world, there is a Facebook recruiter responsible for you. 
Secondly, Facebook does not have a strict list of schools that they recruit exclusively from. And frankly, if Facebook decided that they're only taking people from big name schools, I probably wouldn't be here. And a lot of the people who I've met here who have made my Facebook experience very special would also not be here. So I'm really glad that anyone, regardless of which school they go to, can apply to work at Facebook because that's allowed me to work with a diverse group of engineers from all over the world, ranging from traditional backgrounds to non-traditional backgrounds. And thirdly, I encourage people to figure out what kind of problems they're interested in solving in the world and then try to figure out what parts of Facebook can help them solve those problems. Once you find a Facebook job post relevant to the problems you want to solve, I would encourage you to read between the lines in the skilled and preferred qualifications section of the job listing because they can give you a strong sense of what the team is looking for so that you can tailor your resume. For example, a lot of people in my hometown use WhatsApp to run their businesses, so if this is a problem space I'm interested in working on, I might build something relevant to WhatsApp as a side project or as a class project to boost my application for a WhatsApp team. And a great way to start building projects relevant to Facebook is to get involved in open source. Facebook open sources a lot of its tools, which means that a lot of the code used to build Facebook products are actually free and out there for anyone to build on top of. And additionally, open source communities are great because they're all about supporting each other. So as you build relationships in these communities, you might find a collaborator or a mentor to work with. And this is really important because when people interview for software engineering roles at Facebook, they get evaluated for their technical skills, but they also get evaluated for their communication skills because engineers at Facebook rarely work in isolation. So by getting involved in open source, you really hit two birds with one stone here. I've included a link in the description below with more information on what to expect from the interview process, and I hope you found this information helpful. Thanks for your question. Hi, my name is Keshavel. I'm from Toronto, Canada, and I'm currently an MLH fellow. And I was just wondering, what are some examples of great side projects to help a student intern applicant stand out better on application to a Facebook internship? Hi, Keshav. Thank you for this very insightful question. Uh, my name is Amit Chopra. I am a developer advocate based in Seattle, supporting various Facebook projects under the data pillar. With the rise of open source over the last few years and easy access to development tool and resources, I've certainly seen a lot of students and potential candidates working on side projects to help them stand out among other candidates. Here are three things I would suggest one should keep in mind when thinking about picking open source side projects to work on. First of all, work on a project where the technology stack is somewhat related to the company you are interested in. This will help you ramp up much faster when you have an opportunity to use that technology at work. Secondly, demonstrate some original work, not just copy paste from other projects and try to pick on projects that demonstrate technical complexity. Third, pick a project with a healthy active community and large contributor base where you are more likely to learn from other engineers understand development styles, and most of all, build connections and relationships. I uh, hope this was helpful, and thanks again uh, for this question. Good luck with your fellowship, and looking forward to seeing your contribution. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please give this video a thumbs up.